Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Sorry I cannot be there with you in person. I am home getting some needed rest, recovering from uh, fever. Should be back on track soon. And uh, this is our apostolic prophetic service, and you just heard from Linda Hart, and I know she did an amazing job. She's doing an awesome job leading our prophetic ministry. And um, I had a great time just meditating on the prophetic words that the team put together this month. And uh, what came out of that really relates to what I'm doing right now, and that's living out of the place of rest. I don't like getting sick. I hate feeling horrible inside. Um, that's why, you know, I pray for healing right away. But if it doesn't manifest instantly, then I go and trust the Lord to provide the right medication. So I go to my doctor, and I'm getting better much you know, real quick. But the one thing I do enjoy is getting some extra rest. And uh, I enjoy rest. I enjoy, you know, being at home. It's a nice thing. And sometimes life can get so busy and I don't get much of that. So I appreciate the extra rest. And sometimes I actually get a lot more done from home. <laughs> but the rest that we're talking about today is not that type of rest. This rest is resting in the Lord. And resting in the Lord is not sleeping, though we do sleep, and God ministers to us in our sleep and gives us dreams and all kinds of things. But this rest is a way of life. It's living out of the place of rest. Hebrews chapter 4 is a, a great verse, a great chapter regarding rest, and we're going to read verses 9 through 11 says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath seized from his own works. As God did from his, let us labor therefore to enter that rest. So it says here in these verses, it's very interesting, because it says to seize from our own works, then it says to labor, to work, <laughs> to do what kind of work? To work to rest. That means we got to understand it's a fight for us to trust God, for us to yield to God. Our flesh wants to do our own thing. Our flesh wants to, you know, uh, basically, this is how we often live. We live and do our thing, and we trust God when we've done everything we can and we have nowhere else to turn to. But God wants us to not just turn to Him when we feel like we have no other choice, but to live in Him to rest in Him, to trust in Him at all times. What will that bring forth? Or to find this rest, we first have to understand, you know, we need to go deeper. We need to go deeper with God to enter this rest. we got to get past the surface. Surface Christianity is that Christianity I was just talking about where we just trust God, we just look to God, we just worship God on Sundays and Wednesdays and turn to Him only when we need it. But this let this be the goal of 2017 and beyond. Let's go deeper with Him. You know, Psalm 42, 7 says, Deep calls it deep at the roar of your waterfalls, at your breakers and your waves have gone over me. And I love waterfalls. I love being in the ocean and the waves and just feeling what, you know, that awesome feeling. God wants us to feel that right here, right now, just a wave of His presence, the wave of His glory sweeping over each of us right now. Feel His grace, feel His mercy. Let Him just take you deeper. Let Him take all your cares and concerns and burdens and just wipe those things away like a wave crushes against the shore. Wiping those things away. Like the song says, Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. Let that be our heart, to go deeper. To go deeper till we completely let go and completely let God have His way all the way, all the time. Living in that deep place, living under the water of, of God's glory where we're con completely consumed with Him. Less of us and more of Him. And I don't want to see that. I want to say none of me and all of him. It's my desire. Hallelujah. You know, Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the confession 
of our faith without wavering. For he who hath promised is faithful. We need to stop. We're talking about the waves. We want the waves of glory, but we don't want to be wavering in our faith. We don't want to be in and out. We have all known people that we try to build a relationship with. And because of their hurts and pains in their own life, the lack of trust that they have, it's a wavering. You think they're committing to you, and then they're not. Then they are, then they're not. It's an in and out, up and down. That's the reality of hurting people, is they have a hard time trusting. We need to let God heal us of all our pains and, and start trusting Him. Why not? What do we have to lose? Might as well just dive in. Dive in. I guarantee it that what God has for us is worth it. Whatever we think we are trying to hold on to, what we're afraid of, it's only going to hold us back from God's best. See, when we enter into this place of rest, that's what happens. We receive God's best. We receive not just a little bit of Him. We receive all of Him. God is all. He gives us all, but we don't receive all. We hold ourselves back. The more we give ourselves to Him, the more we receive from Him. As Isaiah 11.2 describes the, the sevenfold spirit. It also says in Revelation 4.5 that there are seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Isaiah 11.2 describes those seven spirits. It's wisdom. Or there's, you know, what those seven lamps are, it's wisdom counsel, knowledge, fear, might, understanding, the Lord. The Lord is those six, those six spirits, are one spirit, the spirit of God, but that's the fullness of that spirit. And so when we're resting in the Lord, when we completely surrender, we receive all that God is, all that God is, the fear of the Lord, the might of his power, understanding his ways, the wisdom of God in every situation, the counsel of God, the knowledge of God. I want all of God. I don't want some. I want all. And I got all. All I have to do is give my all to receive his all. So Ephesians 3, 17, 19 says, So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breath and length, and height, and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. What Should I say that? That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. I declare to each of you right now, be filled with the fullness of God. Be filled with the sevenfold spirit. Know God in his full dimension. Because it's available to each of us simply because of what Jesus has done, because of his blood, because of his death on that cross, his resurrection, all that God is, is now given to us. We just got to believe it and receive it. Now, Joyce Meyer says this quote, God is the champion at bringing people from a place of destruction to a place of total victory. As they reach that place of victory, they become trophies of his grace and they are set on the display as a fragrant reminder of God's goodness. That was one of the words from the team about victory. And, and that's what we are when we enter this rest. We walk in a place of victory. We become God's trophies. People see his glory in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We also got a word about authority. See, in that place of rest is also a place of authority. We think of authority as of striving and working and all that, but it's actually in the rest of the Lord comes His authority. When I'm really focused completely on God and I let everything go and I just open myself totally to God, that's what I feel. I feel His authority come upon me. Another quote by Billy Brim, she said, one with the authority to either let the devil have a place or keep him out. That's the authority. We've been given the keys of the kingdom, the keys of, of life and death, the keys that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. We have that authority, and in that place of rest, we walk in his authority. 
It's delegated authority. Apart from him, we don't have any authority. But in him, we have authority. When he gives us a word, so sometimes we just step out on our own and we just want to make God do what we want. We pray things, yes, in faith, but it doesn't always work. It doesn't always happen. People don't always get healed. People don't always become raised from the dead. See, the thing we need is a word from God. When we walk and rest in Him, we hear from Him, and then we know how to pray, when to pray, who to pray for, and we can expect it to happen because we've been given the authority from God to see it through. Hallelujah. There was a word about angels, and, and this is that place of rest. When we're in that place of rest, like Elijah, our eyes are opened. And like he had revealed to Jehazi that, you know, they were surrounded by an army. But when, but Elijah's eyes saw beyond, and he saw the, the angels of God around those armies, those enemy armies, and he said, open up your eyes, see. In that place of rest, we see, we see heaven. We see heaven and earth. We see the angels of God. We see, we open up and we have faith. We see things through God's perspective. And the fears and anxieties and the worries of this world just fade away in that place of rest. Hallelujah. But in that place of rest, you know, people love God's presence. They love to come to church. They love to go to conferences and, and uh, you know, events that are worship-focused, and there's such a joy and celebration, and that is good. It's good to have fun in God's presence. It's good to socialize with, with Christians and to build each other up and sharp iron sharpening iron, but there's more than just having fun in His presence. God also wants us to go to war, but the time in God's presence to build us up, to make us strong, to encourage us, to edify us, but it's to prepare us to go out and go to war. The battle is real. We are called to put on the full armor of God. It's during that time of worship that the armor is being put on. And now that we have it on, and now that we're confident in the Lord, now that we're resting in Him, we're full of boldness, now we need to go out and destroy the works of darkness. We need to let God use us. Many people are, you know, really good Christians in church, really great at worshiping the Lord and being emotional and all that, but when it comes to their everyday life, they're not battling. They're not interceding. They're not releasing God's word. They're not seeing victories. They're not they're passing people by, not using the authority they've been given to, to raise the dead, to heal the sick, to deliver the oppressed. We need to understand that God has called us to have fun in his presence, but there's a balance. There's also the time to go to war. Next, there was a vision of, um, of uh, a ladder. And, of course, this comes to my mind is Jacob's ladder. And Jacob fell asleep, came into a place of rest. And in that place of rest, God revealed to him a ladder from earth to heaven with angels going up and down. And God is telling us that he wants us daily to go up, daily to be with him. To go deeper actually means to go higher two together. The higher we go up, the, the deeper we, we go in God. God wants us to, to come unto a high place, to meet with Him. He has something to reveal to us. He has something for us to release into the earth. We're to go up, and then we're to take from what's up what God has for us. We receive it, and then we come out to give it, to give it. You know, Billy Graham quoted, God has given us two hands, one to receive with, and the other to give with. That's an awesome, powerful quote by this great man of God. God has given us two hands, one to receive with, and the other to give with. So we receive, because we're called to bring heaven to earth. So as we go to heaven, receive from God, now we come. We don't lose heaven. Heaven is now inside of us. We just understand the principle. It's, it's getting our mind on Christ worshiping Him, coming into His presence, receiving from Him what He has to offer us, and then now letting it flow out of us and giving us to the, giving it away to the people around us, heaven on earth. 
And the more we do that, as it says in the word, I tell you that everyone who has will be given more, but from the one who has nothing, even what he has will be taken away. What are we doing with what he's given us? Some of us may have lost things because we didn't use it, but God is a restorer. If we return to him right now, if we surrender to his will and to his way, he'll restore unto us things that we may have lost. Some of his gifts, we didn't, take, we didn't make the most of it, we didn't utilize it, and we've lost it. But even today, even tonight, I mean, as it's today as I'm doing this, but it's tonight as you hear this, um, you know, activate your gifts. Let your gifts be activated. Let God restore those gifts, gifts of prophecy. God wants all to prophesy. He wants all of you to prophesy. He wants all of you to receive prophetic because he loves to speak into the hearts of people. He loves to encourage people. We should all want to receive prophecy because it clarifies what God wants to do inside of us, what God wants to do through us. We all need that encouragement. It builds us up. It is something we need here on earth. It won't be needed in, in the millennial reign but it's needed now. So I encourage each of you to come forward and receive a prophetic word tonight. Prophetic team, just be open for God to use you to just speak forth his word over each one. God bless you, and I will be seeing all of you soon. Don't forget the leadership conference this Saturday from 9 to 1. I want to see every one of you there if possible. God bless you. Amen.